Yeah, thanks for having me. Our first question is from Gabrielle Gonzalez. Gabrielle, your line has been muted. Good morning, Raquel. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, so the obvious question, you are fighting on the same card as your wife, Tisha Torres. Can you just talk about the mentality? To, obviously, your significant other on the same card has to be very different than when it's just you or just her when you come to fight week. Uh, you know, it's super exciting for me. I'm actually, like, I have been trying to convince Tisha for years now to get on the same card as me, and she's like, no, I can't do it. She's more emotional than I am, so for her, it was just, like, more stressful. Um, even though I worry about her, I have all the faith in the world in her, so I was just like, let's do it, let's do it, and she's like, no. They actually called, and they offered her a fight for um, last week, and then they offered me the fight for this week, and then she got brave enough to push it for and ask for the same day, so... I mean, it's been solid week and just, it's fun. Like, we both have the same goal right now. What was it that changed her mind to push it so she could be on the same card as you finally? I think she sat back and thought about it. We originally met in 2012 fighting on the same card, and then the last card we fought on together was in 2016 in Tampa. That was her rematch against um, Rose, and then I fought Betch Cohea. Uh, so she was just like, oh, you know, we can go every four years now. So we went 2012, 2016, now 2020. Nice. Um, obviously, you're looking to get back on the back to the win column. Can you just talk about, you know, what the last few months has been like in terms of going back to camp and readjusting and working on your game? You know, I mean, quarantine for me has been extremely fun. I know it's been tough on a lot of people, but for me, I didn't realize how much I actually needed to slow down and kind of just focus on myself. So being stuck at the house, I got a lot of things done that I haven't had time to do because I was constantly training or in school and just not able to focus on other parts of my life. Um, so I just kind of took the break and I was doing all those things and then hanging out with my family and spending a lot of quality time, which just kind of, I feel like it reset my soul. Like I just, I sat back chilled and then um i know ufc like uh the sports world they were pushing a lot of fights and there was things airing left and right so i was able to actually watch a lot of my previous fights to sit back and really watch those and look at them i mean it just kind of hit home for me and it brought a different perspective for me so getting back into training camp way more motivated just extremely blessed and happy to be there and um i've discovered that a crash camp is the best for me I'm glad you brought up. Um, talking about your division, um, a lot of people wondering what could be next in the title picture. People talking about Aspen Ladd, if she beats Sarah McMahon, Irene Aldana. In your opinion, what do you think will happen next? You know, honestly, I think uh, Aldana deserves the title shot. Um, I was actually kind of annoyed to see her and Holly set up against each other just because that girl's been grinding, and I truly believe she der she's the one that deserves that shot. I know Amanda just fought, so it would put Aldana back a little bit longer to have a little bit of a layoff until Amanda's ready to fight again, but um, I think that should have been the next shot for her. My final question, obviously, you know, when Amanda performs, there's a lot of hype about the women's goat and everything. She's finished so many opponents quickly. As her career has gone on, is it a bigger badge of honor for you for the fact that, hey, you know, you went those five rounds with her? Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, I take pride in that. Um, you know, no excuses. Amanda's a badass fighter. She does everything that she's supposed to. She's a champion for a reason. Um, I just feel like I'm in a different place now uh, as opposed to coming back. I had a really hard layoff. And then coming back and going straight into the biggest fight of my career with Amanda, coming off a broken leg, all the things. And then a lot of people don't even realize how I was feeling in that fight. I mean, that girl caught my leg at the very beginning of it, and I felt like I was in survival mode. And that's one thing that I, like, looked back on during this quarantine was I was able to actually watch the fight and the emotions I've been carrying from that fight since 2018 to actually watching it. I was like, man... There's nothing but pride there. Like, I'm super proud of everything for knowing exactly how I felt and seeing actually how I performed. Like, it felt 100% different in my mind. And so to actually see it, like, I'm ready for round two. Thank you. Our next question is from Lucifer Rodolfi from Super Lucha. Hey, hello, Raquel. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. 
And how it was this training camp? Because you said you have time to focus, no, uh, in your personal aspects. And we and in besides besides that, uh, which was the main difference between the Holy Holm camp and this one? Uh, this one was four weeks long, and Holly was about six months long. Uh, it was extended out way too long, so I, th that's the main difference. And which aspect of your game you uh, you try to polish, you no, know, for this fight on Saturday? You know, I just focused on all aspects. I have a huge toolbox, and for a while I was only opening a couple drawers to it. So I decided just to open the entire thing and sharpen all my tools, play around, have some fun, and. I mean, that was the biggest key there was getting back to having fun. When you're not having fun, it's really not worth it. Like, you're not going to perform to your maximum potential. And what do you think about your opponent? Do you have the chance to study her and see how she, how the game plan she brings in every fight? Oh, of course. I mean, being a female athlete and knowing the struggles that we went through to get to where we're all at today, I mean, I've watched all these girls from a lot of their first fights and so on. So, I mean... We obviously know what she's about and stuff and whatnot, but my main focus was just focusing on me. And Amanda talked about a possible retirement. And what do you think will happen with the division after if she, you know, relinquished uh, her titles? Uh, what will happen with the bantamweight division in your opinion? There's a lot of talent in this division, so I mean, everybody wants where Amanda's at. Um, we're all going to be fighting for it. Uh, I, I mean, Amanda's career is what it is. She's done some wonderful things for herself. And then, of course, she has a baby on the way and whatnot. But uh, in my opinion, I don't think she's done fighting. Thank you very much. And good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Our next question is from Mike Bond from UFC TV Sports. Hey, Raquel. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Happy to finally track you down here. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. Back to uh, the beginning part when you're talking a little bit about fighting on the same card as Tisha. What's the fight night plan look like? Because obviously this is a little bit different in terms of how long you guys got brought to the apex in terms of like before your fight and everything. Are you even gonna watch your fight before yours? Like, what's kind of the approach on fight night with you two? Oh, most definitely. She fights. Uh, I think it's three fight, three or four fights before me. Um, we both. Uh, we, are, we have the same coaches, but I got a third coach um, just so that way we can hang back. And then, of course, we'll watch Tisha's fight, um, and he'll ride over with me to the Apex, and then we'll meet the other coaches there. But, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. She just she goes out and performs first, and then uh, I think it works best for her because, like I said before, she's super emotional, so she won't have to stress about me until after she's done. Yeah, that's great. And you mentioned you feel that having the compacted training camp has benefited you a lot. Can you just go into a little more details as of why? Is it just because, you know, maybe it doesn't give you as much time to maybe overtrain and potentially overthink the scenario you're going into? Exactly. You know, I mean, the longer the camps are, they just get exhausting. Training, fighting, it's a ton on the body. It's a ton on your mentality, emotional state, everything. So it's just like, I came out of quarantine and it was like fun and exciting to get back into the gym and move around. And then on top of that, just to work towards a goal. The biggest concern there was just the weight. I mean, I was hanging out, I was enjoying life and whatnot. So it was just like, okay, well, if I can knock off the weight, then hey, that's the worst part in this. But uh, you know, I like you said, it, it doesn't give you time to play with your emotions. It doesn't give you time to get exhausted. I mean, of course, coming out of quarantine, I was super sore and everything the first week, but then the entire camp was just super fun. So I like the crash camps. Um, I did that a few years ago uh, in my rematch with Jessica Andrade before she dropped divisions. She, um, They called us on like a three week notice. And let me tell you, I was on like a seven month vacation, but then just to do a three week fight camp was just so much fun. So I actually prefer the shorter camps. Awesome. And last thing, uh, and I hope this doesn't come across as disrespectful to Marion, but you do look at your record and like the past five opponents you fought, it's all either current or former champions and then Irene, who's seemingly in a title eliminator against Holly. This is, it would seem on paper, a bit of a step back in competition. How do you think that's going to allow you to shine on fight night? Hey, you know, I mean, everybody on this platform, they're here for a reason and whatnot. She is ranked number 10, so I'm not looking past her at all and a fight to fight and anything can happen. 
But with that being said, you know, I mean, I'm super excited for this fight and just for this opportunity and to get back out there. Um, like I said, quarantine for me was a huge reset. And to actually step back and look in the mirror, I mean, sometimes there's parts of us that we don't really want to look at. And I took that time to look at those things and process a lot of emotions in my career and the different things. And now I just feel like completely different and this is going into this is like this atmosphere is going back to 2013 for me with the ultimate fighter and it was like you know I put on a highlight performance with Jessman Duke we won fight of the season on there so overall I'm freaking ecstatic for this fight awesome thanks for coming looking forward to it thank you Raquel, uh, your last fight with Holly Holm, I know it was a very frustrating fight for you, the way it played out. And you just mentioned your fight with Jessman, you know, fight of the season. You're known for having exciting fights. How frustrating was that fight? And do you carry that over into a fight like this? Do you say, like, I want to go out and have a, a more exciting fight or hope that Marion is kind of a more willing opponent? You know, that was that was a one-of-a-kind fight. I, uh, I was pretty bitter on that one. And, like... I'm not a poor sport and, or anything like that, but I mean, I will be the first to admit, like I was super bitter about that. It was a fight that I wanted for five years. Um, I wanted that rematch and then just to go out there and we had such a huge opportunity. We were on a huge card. We were the co-main event and then for it to go out there and play the way it did, like, I mean, a fight's a fight, anything can happen, but like that fight was just, I don't even want to call it a fight. That hug match was really frustrating. Um, and it kind of just like, that was one of the ones, it was funny because back when I originally fought her, uh, I was like, man, I should have beat this chick. So it kind of lit the flame. And then I went on my winning streak and then I had a setback with going into my surgeries and everything else and then coming back and that. And then now all of a sudden that fight did the same thing again. I was like, oh, it lit the flame all over again. So now it's just like, there's a new fire burning. And for sure, I definitely want a different performance come Saturday. That, I mean, obviously, anytime you lose a fight, you want a chance to, you know, avenge that loss. And I remember the first fight with Holly was so close, razor close, split decision, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but now, you know, you probably won't revisit that fight. Is that kind of maybe you're more frustrated knowing that you probably won't get a third fight? Would you even want a third fight with Holly? Oh, for sure. I would want a third fight. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, that's the sport for you. It goes whatever way and there's areas in that fight that I definitely should have capitalized in those moments when we separated and whatnot but um it's one of the ones you know you learn from it and there's a difference between losing and like actually taking a serious loss um so there was a difference in that fight like Holly beat me with using her leverage on me and um it wasn't it's just one of the ones to where the frustration came in but hey the past is the past so let's throw that out the window it's going to be 10 times more exciting in the future, and uh, here's my new opportunity come Saturday. Do you feel like Marion is that kind of willing opponent who is going to give you a fight, who's going to bring the fight to you, which obviously then gives you more opportunity to create more offense, things like that? Oh, yeah. She likes to come out. She uh, she definitely likes to strike and do stuff, so I think, uh, I think it's going to be a fun scrap. You mentioned a minute ago everyone talked about Amanda Nunes saying she may retire. I think a lot of people are believing that, you know, she's taking time while probably not retiring. But you said you don't think she's retiring either. I'll ask you the question, why? Do you just believe it's just a matter of the, the timing of the fight coming off and she just wants to take some time off? Or why do you believe she's going to fight again? You know, so there's a couple things. I mean, Amanda's accomplished so many things in her career to where, yeah, is she satisfied and can she walk away? For sure. But at the same time, I mean, she's still young. She's in her prime. And I mean, right now, I think it's just she has a baby on the way. Uh, her and Nina got married and stuff, and she's building her family. So she's focusing on a different part of her life currently, um, which is completely fine. I mean, sometimes you get so surrounded by the fight game and lost in it, but now she's looking into a different part. But I think inside, like, the fighting's still there. Like, she's not ready to fully give it up. Does she want the time off? Sure. Um, and then probably in a few months, once it's said and done, she's going to be like, oh, man, she's going to have that itch again. It's kind of one of those things to where when do we all know when it's going to be time to actually retire? Um, and as you see previously, like a lot of the athletes, they go into retirement, but then here they are a year later back out of it. So she's not done. Thanks, Raquel. Thank you. That's all the time we have for you today, Raquel. Thank cool. You. Thank you.